hey guys welcome to my channel i'm jasmine lee for those of you who don't know me and if you are new to my channel welcome here today's look is inspired by the one and only first african-american supermodel by the name of danielle luna danielle luna is a detroit native who started her climb in 1965 when she first graced the sketched cover of Harper's Bazaar and then was photographed also for the cover of British Vogue. So that was her claim to fame. And for those following 10 years or so, she made a real impact and a really big name for herself. Um, it's hard to find various pictures of her, but I will definitely include a few over here as I talk about her and this look today. So. You might think I'm looking a little bit crazy. What I did under my eyes, instead of putting the false um, individuals under my eyes, I just thought this would be more fun to do. And this is how her lashes looked to me. I couldn't find metal circular earrings at short notice, so I ended up getting these from the beauty supply store in my neighborhood. And then um, the, the eye look itself is just very simple cut crease very direct straight to the point and then of course I just have on um, like a wavy curly wig even though the picture I used for inspiration you couldn't even see her hair so it didn't matter as far as that was concerned but yeah I don't want to talk too much I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial and this look and if you want to know more about Danielle Luna I will be sure to link some information down below thanks for watching guys so to start off prepping the skin i'm using this moisturizer from the ordinary i took a little bit um just because a little bit tends to go a long way if you use too much it actually doesn't rub into your skin properly and now i'm using a store-bought brand of jojoba oil and just putting that on my face using a dropper um the dropper does not come with the oil i actually just repurposed an old drunk elephant bottle for that we recycle, okay? And now I'm prepping my brows with edge control and an edge brush, but I'm using it on my eyebrows. Um, I wanted my eyebrows to have that laminated look so that they lay straight up. And even though I don't actually do my brows till way later down the line in this video, I wanted to kind of get them prepped and ready now. And a lot of the pictures I would see, um, this was kind of like a trademark brow for her was to like make those spikes throughout her brow hairs. And so that is an element of the look I wanted to keep. And of course I made sure I matched my foundation. Back then I understand why her makeup looked a little crazy foundation wise. Okay, so now I'm taking a Real Technique sponge and my Laura Mercier translucent setting powder and I'm just putting a very thin veil of that all over my face. I actually learned this technique from Jackie Ina and if anybody knows me, I'm a really big fan of her channel and um, she introduced this technique about two or three years ago, but it's not new. It's just something that got reintroduced and it definitely works at making your makeup last longer and just making it last all day without your natural oils or the outside weather impacting it and i just swear by the technique i love it i don't know <laughs> then i decided to hydrate my face um i got this mist from marshall's but i know it seems like this defeats the last step but it doesn't it just hydrates it and takes away that powdery texture Okay, now I'm doing my eyes, so I'm using the Painterly Paint and Pop from MAC and a flat concealer brush from P. Louise, and I'm just getting my eyes prepped and ready. Sorry, this tutorial's kinda all over the place in terms of the order in which I did my face. Um, because of the way the brows had to be done, I had to kinda do things in a way that made sense, and this is what makes sense to me, sis. So yeah, sorry in advance for jumping all over the place. <laughs> Now what I can say about this look is that the eyeshadow was super easy. You only need palettes that have browns and golds in them, um, possibly like lighter oranges and things of that nature if you prefer that look. And um, yeah. So I'm just taking this medium brown from the Morphe palette all into my crease. And I chose to keep it um, tightly packed in the area where I'm applying it because I still wanted to go in with a lighter shade above that brown um, that I'm going to be taking from the Juvia's Place palette. So if you're wondering why I didn't go further up, that's why. 
so the lighter shade i'm using is called kano just in case any of you are wondering um the brush i'm using here is a 507 but the one i applied um the, the first color with was just a regular bullet or pencil crease brush and i'm just really blending it out to make sure that i get the shapes that i want the color payoff that i want um i went back and forth between the first and second color countless times just to make sure that brown was really really deep then i'm gonna go in with the mino shade from the warrior palette and this is going to be my deepest crease color just so that there is definition there when i cut my crease So to cut my crease, I'm using e.l.f.'s 16 hour camo concealer in the shade Tan Walnut and my MAC 195 brush. I really like this brush for cutting my creases because of the shape and how thin it is. It just gives me the most precise cut creases. So here I'm just showing you guys how I corrected my cut crease because it was a little awkward when I would open my eye. I have a double fold there so I want to make sure that that fold that's the highest up is covered with concealer. I forgot to show you guys the palette, but there's a shade in the Warrior palette called Ahosi, and it's literally the only white shade in that palette that I'm using to set the concealer. And now I'm taking the shades Maremi and Amina, um, both of which, well one is more like a white gold and the other is more like a pale gold, so I'm putting both of those on my lid. I ended up using Maremi as my brow bone highlight as well. So for foundation, I'm using my Bobbi Brown Skin Long Wear Weightless Foundation in the shade Cool Golden. And I'm putting that all over my face, of course. Now, Danya Luna did have a lot of photos where her makeup will often look very dry, very ashy, just very not her color. But due to some complexities in her biography, I'm not sure if that was due to her trying to appear racially ambiguous or if it was just due to lack of advancement in makeup. For concealer, I'm using my Pat McGrath Labs Sublime Perfection Concealer in the shade Medium Deep 20. And it has like a very yellowy undertone, so it's very light for me, but it was definitely perfect for this look. For the pictures I was able to find of Danya Luna in color, she often had really high contrast concealer versus like her skin tone or her foundation. Again, I'm not sure if any of that was purposeful or if that was due to just the era of makeup and that lack of advancement. And even with all that working against her, she was still gorgeous. So yeah, black excellence, you know? For my contour, I used the Black Radiance True Complexion Contour Palette. First, I started going in with the Sculpt shade and then I followed that up with a darker contour shade just to deepen up the areas where I really wanted to make it dramatic. I also use that same palette for my nose contour just with a smaller brush. And I ended up touching it back up with that same concealer from Pat McGrath um, just because I wanted that more dramatic contrast. I'm really trying to go for the essence of Danielle Luna's look. Now I'm going to take my KKW Beauty Mascara, put that all over my top and bottom lashes, and then I'm going to take my Lily Lashes in the Miami style and apply those off camera, so I will be right back. Ended up applying my top liner off camera, but I did come back on to show you how I'm putting the Teddy um, Coal Liner from MAC in my waterline. And then I'm going to be taking the Pat McGrath Labs Liquid Liner and doing the bottom lash line effect. Um, you can also use actual lashes for this, whether you have strips or individuals. This is just a little more artsy this way, and this is just what I chose to do. 
If you do happen to want to follow this tutorial and you um, end up doing the liner the way I'm doing it, just make sure you try to keep that bottom line um, under your lash line as thin as possible. Make your strokes very like, just hair like, you know, like you're doing your brows. Just keep it really thin, really precise, and really cute. I actually started to make my line a little too thick. Here I switched liners because the Better Than Sex is, again, I'm gonna say this forever, it's the juiciest liner ever ever that I've tried so far as far as a pen is concerned so it's the best one on the market to me um if you guys know of anything better I'm definitely down to try it I love a good liner leave those comments and recommendations down below I also noticed her mole um, in the picture so I'm just adding a fake one of those and then I am going back to these brows these lovely lovely brows <laughs> We're done with the edge control, but I am still brushing them up. As far as the residue is concerned, they'll still stick and lay how I need them to. And then I'm gonna take my ABH Dip Brow Pomade in the shade Ebony, and I'm just making these strokes. They're not gonna be hair-like at all. They're supposed to be pretty obvious um, and intentional looking. And I know it looks a little bit weird, but hear me out, it's kinda cute after the fact. Now I'm taking the lip liner Chestnut and Night Moth from MAC Cosmetics and I'm just lining my lips. First I'm going in with Chestnut and then I'm going to take my Satin MAC Lipstick in the shade Mocha, put that on my lips and then slightly outline my lips again with the um, Night Moth pencil. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, I'm taking the Laura Mercier um, powder over my lips to mattify the satin texture of the lips. I didn't want the satin texture, I wanted it to be matte and dry, so yeah. All right guys, so this is the finished product. Um, obviously, if you watched the beginning of the video, then you know what it looked like, but I wanted to show you guys the end results with the wig. Um, this wig, I don't even, I want to say it's outre, but I would have to double check that for you guys. I don't want to give you anything wrong. Um, these earrings are like two bucks. You can find them at any hair store, beauty supply, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Just <laughs> make sure you guys blow up the comments. Let me know what you think about this look and um if you want to see more recreations like this i had a lot more fun doing this than any tutorial and i've lately been very obsessed with like african-american icons of these previous decades as far as their hair their makeup we weren't highlighted a lot back then so for the few that were i just really want to pay homage so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this look and thank you for watching bye guys